Hey, what's up, everybody? Say, I wanted to uh, drop a line for everybody who had kind of been following the Viper build that I had done. And uh, if you had remembered, I threw the Viper up on the dyno back uh, at uh, Summer Street Nationals uh, last year and did the competition. And uh, I ended up losing the competition. I, I got second place, which is pretty good. I annihilated everybody in the stop box, uh, coming very close to even beating a four-wheel drive uh, GTR, uh, beat a full-on uh, race car that was, you know, a thousand pounds lighter. So, I mean, the car handled really well, and uh, it stopped really well, and it did all the things, you know, a good road race car did, but it was just a little down on horsepower. So, um, what I did was, uh, kind of over the last couple months or so, I uh, did some upgrades to it, and I made uh, you know about a hundred extra horsepower with the upgrades. So let me kind of let me walk you through it. Uh, first off, you know I always have to kind of clean my space. So this is my clean space before I start working on things. Otherwise, things just get lost. Um, this is what I started with. It was a uh, you know Dodge Viper uh, stock motor uh, with headers and a shortened exhaust uh, with some spiral mufflers, K and N filters. And uh, that was pretty much it. And it made, uh, you know, stock to the wheels, 425 horse, and, uh, you know, right around 540, 550 uh, rear wheel torque, which is, you know, pretty good. But, you know, you've got two extra cylinders, so that, you know, makes up for a big difference. Uh, just another shot of the motor here. Nothing fancy to look at. Pretty stock, again. Uh, you know, take note of this one because the, if you look at the fuel system, fuel system is routed in a kind of an odd way where there's lots of extra lines and it's kind of redundant and, uh, you know, it didn't, didn't really help in serviceability very well. So uh, I had some uh, issues with uh, fuel pressure, especially on startup. So I decided later to redo this, but this was just kind of taking a, a front accessories off and kind of getting things prepped for some of the work that I was going to do. Uh, headers uh, were just kind of a pain in the butt. These are a set of F SVP headers. They don't make these anymore, um, but, you know, I don't even know if they're worth anything, but uh, they seem to work pretty well. Um, you know, the rated horsepower from the factory was 450 at the crank. It made 425 at the wheels, so something was obviously working. Uh, I, I, again, this is kind of just a little better shot of it. Uh, I did end up replacing the thermostat as well. And if you see there, the thermostat, that big hose leads right to under there. Um, you have to remove the intake to replace a the thermostat in this car. The intake is a giant, giant pain in the butt to replace because uh, the hole, the, the bolts for them are actually under the uh, injectors and you can you easily lose the tiny little bolts that are in there and of course they're the you know star type you know double hex uh, you know force you to not uh, work on your own car kind of, you know the real fiddly holes that they got to work through it's just a giant pain here's is with the valve cover off you know like I said it was stock motor uh, even had the stock uh, rocker uh, rockers that are on there um, this is, uh, you know, finally removing everything. You can see one of the fuel lines running, you know, into that uh, intake valley area. Uh, again, it was just, it was uh, overly complicated. I, you know, there were a lot better ways of doing it. And uh, I'll kind of show you some of the other ways that I, I fixed it. Uh, some of the parts as I was pulling them off, um, the intake might look familiar because, you know, there's a Lamborghini and those uh, Lamborghini uh, had a d design on there that looked very similar. So, uh, you know, these are just stock parts that are coming off. Ended up reusing the, the, uh, the bolt, uh, head bolts. Um, they were, they're not torqued to yield and they were totally fine to, to go back on. I wasn't running any big compression or turbos or superchargers or anything. So, um, I would replace those if that was kind of the next step, but, but, uh, ended up just kind of using the same ones over again. Uh, just, you know, the same thing, lining up parts. Uh, for me, it always helps just to line them up in the air, in the, in the way I took them off. So I can always find the bolts and I can always kind of just do it in sequence. It makes things a lot easier. Uh, here we are, uh, you know, kind of looking at some of the the, the uh, cast uh, heads that are on there. Uh, these are aluminum, of course, uh, aluminum block, aluminum head uh, motor. Uh, Got to vacuum out uh, this some of that fluid because it'll get in the oil. I did change the oil afterwards uh, as soon as I put everything back together because that just made more sense. Uh, but uh, you know, the the head gasket stuck, so I just scrape all that junk off. It was it, it was it was a lot of fun, if, <laughs> if in the most sarcastic of ways. 
It's hard to see in this one, but if you look really closely, you can see the pushrod uh, hole in the he in the head gasket, and that was rubbing against uh, the pushrods. And you'll see it in the later photo um, of the uh, head gaskets. They are uh, an upgraded design that have uh, they're they're more there's more of a two several sheets of metals kind of stuck together, and the holes are a lot bigger, so the de they de upgraded the design. Uh, this is basically what I was doing. I was gonna I was gonna port the heads. I was gonna redo the fuel system, and I was gonna put on uh, some better rockers, and I was also gonna do some bigger throttle bodies, and that um, was kind of the extent of uh, what I was going to do without having to pull the motor. And uh, you could have done I could have done a cam at this point, but doing a cam would have meant uh, taking the motor out, and that was something that I really wasn't willing to do. Um, I got quotes of uh, you know seven grand. Uh, to pull the motor, put a cam, do heads, uh, that sort of thing. And I thought, you know, I could, you know, I could save a couple, a couple bucks, and uh, do it myself, and you know, kind of get an extra little uh, horsepower gain. Uh, but you know, obviously, if I would have done a cam, I would have made more power um, than than kind of, you know, what I what I did make. And you'll see uh, uh, going forward here. Uh, but, so that was, you know, the one thing that I ended up skipping. This this motor does have the the good 708 uh, Viper cam. That is kind of the nicer upgraded ones. Uh, again, could have got a, a custom grind one and you know paid you know a lot extra for it. But uh, ended up saving some money in the end. And you know, I I I, I did lose some horsepower. So that is that is the truth. Uh, these are the new throttle bodies. These are 70 millimeters, and there's two of them. I believe the originals are 50. Two millimeters, so you can just you can really see how much bigger and how much more air is going to be flowing through here. I ended up sending out the heads and sent out the intake to be port matched, um, and then you'll I have some flow numbers uh, I'll show you in a second. I did find a set of used shaft mounted T and D rockers. Uh, these are 1.7s. And they uh, they have the shaft that are on there. That I think this is the, these are the style that NASCAR uses. Um, big beefy pieces that you know that bolt straight into the stock location. You don't need any adjustment or any uh, modification to the uh, valve cover. So it works really well. Um, and I got them used. I got them for you know they're normally like seventeen hundred bucks or something. And I think I got them used. Uh, found a guy who was rebuilding his motor and wanted to upgrade to other things. Sold and sold these to me for a little, I think a little under a grand shipped to me. So it was a pretty good deal. Can't uh, can't lie. These were looked over by Arrow. Um, some of you Viper guys might know or know the name pretty pretty well. So uh, I trust the mechanics over there. They looked it over and said that they couldn't see any damage or anything. So I I bought them sight unseen. These are the extra. Believe it or not. So I reworked the fuel system. This is the extra. Uh, pieces that I pulled off, and not the ones that I reused. Now, okay, so I reused a fuel pressure regulator. Fine, you know, just sue me. But um, these are, the, the, but bes besides that, these are the extra fittings. I mean, there's got to be, you know, two hundred dollars in fittings just right there alone that uh, you know were severely redundant. So I had to rethink the fuel system, and this was one of the ideas that I had was to run a uh, fuel uh, line, uh, you know, under, you know, kind of up and over the, the rear kind of frame, um, you know, kind of construction that holds the gas tank, which is behind the driver and passenger seat, and then kind of under, uh, kind of or along the frame rail up a couple inches. But, you know, kind of having seen uh, what happened to Ben Keating's car, who uh, who happens to be a Facebook friend of mine? Um, I had asked that question and posed it, and Ben posted a, a very similar picture like this of his uh, uh, his Viper on fire, and uh, I got a little nervous because he he kind of pointed out that the drive shaft was quite close, and uh, you know, however unlikely, this one's on fire, and I don't want that to happen to mine. So instead, what I got was I went to RSI, and they 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 make these uh, drop in fuel buckets, and uh, usually it's a dual uh, pump setup, but I asked him, I said, you know, can you just make me a, a one pump? I, you know, I'm not running turbos or anything. This is kind of a, you know, the, these configurations can hold up to three pumps and, you know, dash, whatever, 10, 12 lines, they'll do anything for you. And uh, these guys are running, you know, twin turbo, big horsepower sort of stuff. And, you know, I'm not, I wasn't doing anything crazy like that. So uh, I just asked them to build me a, a one pump deal and they were totally fine with it. 
Uh, I did re relocate the fuel pressure regulator to an easier spot um, that was away from all the exhaust and away from the intake and uh, away from everything else. Plus, it also kind of hid things, so it made, made it a little bit nicer, and it ran into the back of the heads, uh, excuse me, the back of the intake um, uh, to uh, feed the, the dual fuel, uh, two, two lines on either side. So this is the upgraded uh, head gasket. As you can see, the uh, 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 push rod holes are much bigger in design, and there were no touching at all uh, when I put them back in. So that was kind of the, the nice uh, thing about these. You know, you torque them down. Uh, I think you progressively torque them down to like 45. Start in a star pattern in the middle, and then you kind of work your way out and kind of move up to 95 pounds uh, per, per bolt uh, that's in there. Uh, you might have to zoom in a little bit on this photo, but what you can see, these are the, the flow numbers. I took it to TPIS in Chaska, and uh, these guys are known for doing uh, a lot of LS motors, and, you know, I kind of took it. They've been friends of mine for a real long time. They do some good work, and you might have seen some of their work in some of my other videos. So, you know, I really trusted them and took them there and and uh, got some, you know, uh, in increases here on the intake. You know, I got, you know, 34, 38, and... 31, you know, we're talking, you know, 18% uh, increase here, and on the exhaust side, we're at a 48 to 52%, you know, at uh, at, at 500. So, um, you know, pre pretty good gains. I don't think um, they were super aggressive with it. Um, you know, these are again, these are not heads that they work on every day, so they didn't really know exactly how much to do it. You know, there is an opportunity here to upgrade valves to go to a bigger valve size. Uh, but, um, you know, I wanted to kind of, you, you know, just make a little bit of horsepower and not really kind of go overboard with it and do everything. And if I was going to go, you know, full bore, we would have gone bigger valves. We would have gone really aggressive on, uh, you know, the head porting and uh, polishing and that bit and then throw some turbos on it and, you know, make some big power. But this is, uh, th the point of this was just to increase bump up power a little bit, make it reliable. And, you know, if stuff breaks, then, you know, we got off the shelf parts. Uh, here we go. I got I got one head back on, um, you know, kind of working systematically like I did, you know, kind of working my way down my bench, starting on the right and kind of going to the left. Um, I'm installing the uh, uh, shaft uh, shaft rocker. This is the shaft part of that rocker um, that kind of goes right by the uh, valves there. Um, you'll also see here uh, I installed the throttle bodies. Uh, which are now uh, much, much bigger. So I had to buy a bigger tube uh, adapter, uh, which is not really that, you know, you know, a couple bucks, not a big deal. And then you'll see that I uh, added that crossover tube uh, for the uh, uh, fuel lines uh, instead of kind of having that regulator right sit right there on top of the intake. And it just made me nervous. I, I'm sure it wasn't going to catch fire or explode or anything, but I just it just really made me nervous to have it there. Um, so, you know, this is, a, again, this is adjusting, um, the rockers that are in there. Uh, I, I did kind of devise, you'll see in this next photo, a way, this big long bar I used to, uh, to, uh, crank over the motor as I was adjusting them. I wised up and then got a bump starter, uh, later, which was way, a, it, it just, just buy one. If you don't have one and you're going to do something like this, just buy one. It's worth the 30 bucks. It's going to save you so much time and effort in this to look stupid, putting a giant bar into the radiator cavity of your car. I mean, just, just for the sake of it, go buy a bump start switch. Uh, then, uh, I had to up, uh, I, Todd over at, uh, ANC performance in California had sent me all these, uh, all my parts that I needed, the thermostat and, the uh, head gaskets and also sent me this SCT tuner uh, with a kind of a baseline tune for what I was doing. Him and I had a conversation. Worked out really well, uh, but it will need some uh, tuning later. Uh, part of the price when you buy one of these from Todd is that he uh, will bench tune it for you. So, you know, you, you take your car, you put it on a dyno, call him up, and you, you work it out to where uh, they, you guys, you know, uh, you, you talk to each other and uh, then he sends you another file, you re-upload it, and you kind of do this for a couple hours, and then you guys get a pretty good tune. However, here's what happened. Uh, because the previous motor that was in the car got blown up, and one of the previous owners had put a crate motor in there, so the motor had, you know, as, as you can see, look at some of the parts as I was taking off, only had about 1,000 miles on the car. 
excuse me, a thousand miles on the motor, the car only had 11,000 miles. So it's a very low mile car. Uh, so the motor, um, got swapped and also at the same time they swapped the computer. Now in a crate motor, they did not, for whatever reason, maybe because it was a race car, maybe because they didn't care, maybe at the time it didn't matter, but it matters now because there was no VIN number typed into the uh, ECU. And I don't know if that was Dodge's way of kind of doing some security checks so you couldn't get in there and swap these things around or what the, the, the plan was, uh, but that was what they did. And so what I had to do is send it, had to send it back to Todd, I had to send that whole ECU to Todd he put in the VIN number for me, and then it was able to finally take the tune. But uh, that was kind of a hassle and a pain in the butt, uh, and it kind of you know put my schedule back several days. And you know, look, things happen. Um, you know, life happens. Life kind of kicks you in the butt, and then I ended up selling it. Uh, so I didn't get really get a chance to do it. But the nice thing is, is he promised me he was going to keep racing the thing and, uh, you know, take it on the track and really kick some butt with it. So that really made me happy. And, uh, sen- subsequently has sent me some photos of him racing the, the ever loving hell out of this car. And I, and it's just fabulous. I ended up throwing in a bunch of parts, uh, with it because, you know, Hey, Dodge guys, that's what they do. They just hoard parts. And this is my hoard that I had uh, ended up just t- uh, giving it all with the car. I was I was done at that point and uh, kind of needed to move on. Um, you know, this is a photo of, of uh, the new owner at one of the race prep shops that he took it to so that they can kind of look at it, uh, uh, get a good look at it when it's on the ground. So, you know, pretty, pretty neat little setup they got here. Threw it on the dyno and uh, put it on the rollers and kind of fired it up. Um, here in the dyno uh, sheet, you can see uh, it made uh, you know about 515, 520 rear wheel horsepower. So that's about 100 horsepower gain, and then just just shy of 550 foot pounds of torque, right around that 4,000 mark. So I mean it makes really good torque um, in that uh, you know kind of 4,000 to 5,000 range, and then made some pretty decent peak horsepower and kept climbing and then kind of you know dropped off around six. So that might be a good shift point if, if uh, the new owner is watching. Um, so, I mean, again, we didn't really uh, do too many uh, modifications. We ported and polished the heads and uh, added some bigger throttle bodies and some rockers and got an extra 100 horsepower. To be fair, uh, you do get ex- two extra cylinders as opposed to an LS motor, so you'll probably see about 75 ish if you're going to do this to an LS motor and uh, that's you know that's pretty normal so having an extra two cylinders made it made a difference and you know uh, if I were to do this again you know let's you, you know if if I wanted more power I mean what are the options you know I can I can uh, have an upgraded cam I could do a more aggressive port job with you know bigger valves and that sort of thing uh, we could pull the motor and put a stroke on it or even bore it out a little bit and of course the big always popular thing here is turbos or superchargers uh, so that's, you know, th- those are kind of the, the next steps for that. But, you know, the, the, what I did was a pretty good start. And if you're going to put a supercharger or turbo on it, these are kind of things you're going to want to do anyway uh, to really maximize the, the potential of those, those things that you're going to do. Uh, finally, let's kind of talk about some numbers. Uh, I did all the labor myself except for the machining work, of course. Um, that was about $1,500 bucks, um, retail. And throttle bodies were 500. Uh, rockers were about a thousand bucks. The AC, ACT tuner plus the dyno, you know, I'd have to pay for the dyno time, but that included the tuning, 500 bucks. And then $500 for gaskets and related parts. So those, uh, that's kind of where I'm at. Um, the car is being raced. It's uh, the the new owner is in New Jersey and he's already taken it out several times. Uh, and, you know, kind of flogged it pretty well. He's pretty happy with it, uh, the way it handles, the way it moves, and it's got decent power for, for a, a, a decent road race car. Uh, so I'm, I'm happy for him. I hope he really enjoys it. And, uh, again, thanks for your time. Don't forget, subscribe, and uh, I'll get, I will check you guys later.